Good afternoon, everyone. As we are waiting for more people to join us, let me start off with a corporate video. She's never been to medical school, but she's critical to fighting cancer. Really? Really. That's cool. And this IT pro, he's never watered a plant. But he's critical to helping this farmer grow these huge things. And all this! What Who's critical to education? Her? It's not just Miss Jin. Hey, I love Miss Jin. Yeah, she's great. But this guy is critical, too. You see, there's an army of people rewriting what's possible. You may not know their names, but they're solving some of our biggest challenges. They're the critical unknowns. Well, until now. And our mission is to power theirs with a range of device-to-data center solutions. Lenovo, smarter technology for all. Welcome everyone to our webinar on smart machines for smart business. Now, please note that all are on mute by default so as not to disrupt the presentations. As always, if you have a question, there is a question, option, a question box option on your GoToWebinar control panel. So please put, it, put in your questions in there and we will tend to it at the end of the session. All right. Now, today we are also going to be giving out a lucky draw, which is the X1 poll. So please stay with us until the very end because we'll be drawing out the winner's name. All right. Now, allow me to introduce our speakers for today. So joining us today, we have Ivan Sin, our segment lead. Uh, from Ariel in uh, Lenovo, Singapore. He will be doing the introduction. Ivan, if you can just give a wave so people will know who you are. Hi. Right. And then we have uh, Michael. Michael is the Solutions Architecture Manager joining us all the way from Melbourne. Uh, he will be taking on the NVIDIA and Lenovo Better to Together presentation. And then, of course, um, not a stranger to us anymore would be Jalil, our workstation business manager for Lenovo Singapore and Indonesia. She will be talking about choosing the right workstation. So, and then, like we hi, Jalil. So, as we mentioned, we will just give some time at the end of the session for Q&A. Now, aside from this, we also would like to give out more things so stay with us for at least an hour for this session we will be giving you a great food voucher for attending and aside from that we do have some poll questions which will be coming out in between the sessions so i will give you a hint you need to get three out of four questions correct to be entitled to an extra grab voucher all right so take note answers are always within the presentations of uh, that the speaker mentioned the answer or it will be in the slides all right so without further ado let me hand the time over to ivan for the introduction ivan over to you hi uh, a very good afternoon to one and all to join us in this uh, webinar so um smarter machine and smarter business so as we all know um in a lot of our business area in terms like medicine sustainability and even 3d design you need a high compute power system to help enable to run your business for free and also efficiently. Um, today, we have Michael Lam from NVIDIA and also my colleague, uh, Jelia, who will walk you through on some of the systems as well as the compute that is available in the marketplace. Again, um, sit back and then uh, let our colleagues and friends um, share with you what's available. Um, over to you, Michael. Thank you, Ivan, appreciate it. <clears throat> and thank you everybody for your time today. Um, as Ivan mentioned, I'm the Solutions Architecture Manager for uh, Asia Pacific South, uh, and I'm also the Professional Visualizations Solutions Architect. So 
the next uh, 30 minutes, I'm just going to share with you some of the stories we have uh, together in terms of the offerings. But I'd like to keep the, the context here really, really importantly. Um, although I'm talking about GPUs and, and both mobile and desktop GPUs, I really want you to think about the larger set piece and how you deploy them because you know, nobody buys a GPU because it looks good on a desk. Uh, you, you deploy that in a system. So there's a variety of uh, desktops um, and, and laptops or mobile form factors, and there's a lot of different things you can do. So there's a lot of variability uh, in, in the whole system you can put together, but I'll focus on the GPU components because we've had some uh, fairly significant updates uh, recent times. Next slide, please. And um, obviously, you know, what we focus on, um, you know, people think graphics and people think GPUs, but there's actually a fairly broad church in terms of, you know, what people use these things for. So, you know, we talk about you know, AI being uh, everywhere, and that's not just um, supercompute stuff. That actually happens at the, the desktop level as well. And we talk about AI everywhere. As it says here, we're talking about generative design analytics. So this is the ability, for example, to uh, design a chair and perhaps um, uh, an Autodesk tool, and then say, make some changes for me, come up with some ideas, do a bit of stress testing. This is where the AI comes in to expand on your creativity. Needless to say, uh, visualization is an extremely large part of what we do. And not just um, uh, ray tracing, um, which is fairly new, uh, real-time ray tracing, which is very new and requires a lot of power, we have a dedicated course for that. But, you know, augmented reality, virtual reality, and, you know, we combine the two into what we call XR as well. And simulation. Uh, for those of you doing design work, um, those of you doing in, uh, engineering and manufacturing work, um, we love to simulate things. Uh, I didn't quite understand this until one of my um, automotive customers said, to build a clay model of a car can take several weeks, but to be able to put through a simulation model um, and put it through a design process with the team, we can literally take months of our design processes and get things right first time. And of course, remote collaboration. Having people working together over multiple places this is really, really critical. And, you know, uh, I'd love to say, hey, we're coming out of COVID, but as we've seen, there are plenty of uh, um, speed humps in the road ahead. Next slide, please. So, you know, we've been developing a, a lot of uh, different tools um, and uh, really, you know, over the years, for those of you who've seen our generations from you know, the early days, uh, Kepler, that was just being uh, retired as I joined the company about six years ago, Maxwell, Pascal, Turing, and our latest generation is called Ampere. The Ampere generation has a couple of new bits and pieces in it, but also a couple of um, refinements as well. It's got our second generation of ray tracing cores. It's also got our third generation of AI cores called tensor cores. It's got a mad number of cores and some incredibly high um, uh, memory counts on it. And all of this is really driven by our customers. They want to do bigger, faster, higher, better. Um, and, and that's to increase their business. So lots of really important um, features, uh, either developed or new in Ampere as well. Next slide, please. So, you know, we talk about uh, NVIDIA RTX and, and the reason that's sort of important to understand is, um, apart from, you know, the cool picture made up of a couple of video cards, is RTX is our new name for Quadro. So for those of you who have been using the Quadro branding name for many years, uh, it still exists for our driving software, but uh, for the actual cards themselves, we refer to them as RTX. So um, they are the most powerful graphics cards on the planet. They have the latest architecture. They have incredibly large amounts of memory, uh, which is really important for larger data sets and uh, applications, multiple applications on the one platform. Real-time ray tracing. So rather than spending, you know, four or five hours just getting a couple of frames, you can actually watch things happen live on your system. The accelerated AI, which is AI everywhere, which is not AI that you may use per se as, as AI, but it's something that's built into the applications you use and they leverage this. More importantly, because these are our professional cards, and I will actually touch a little bit on professional versus consumer at the end of my presentation, um, have enterprise class reliability, stability, and supportability. And of course, they have support for literally hundreds of professional applications. And we often get asked the question, does it run on GeForce? Does it run on gaming cards? That's not really the question. If you're trying to design a building and getting it right, you need to make sure it's certified so that the outcome of your, your work is absolutely guaranteed. Next slide, please. So um, as I said, you know, there's a few new things in our, our latest generation. 
And the ray tracing is just part of that. And, and people talk about why this is important. So you know, real-time ray tracing, there's a building in London uh, which has a, has a concave a surface and it's mirrored as many buildings are nowadays. And that's cool. But what happens is at a certain time of day, um, that actually focuses light on a parking spot directly opposite, which they only found out one day when it burned off the wing mirror of a car. Humorous story, but if they had have done real-time ray tracing, they would have known that in advance. And that's, you know, as I said to one of my architectural customers, it's just an amusing story. They went, oh, no, 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 no. That actually significantly affected the reputation of the company that did that. They don't, nobody else wants that to happen. So we've got tools such as Enscape, which can use our ray tracing, and you can literally as per the, the Truman Show, you know, cue the sun and move the sun and lights around and see what happens. We've done some modeling for our own buildings as well, which have got you know, lots of light panels to make sure that you know, no one person is, is negatively impacted. I mentioned the, um, the ubiquity of, of uh, AI um, everywhere and the tensor cores being able to process that. These are dedicated cores. So we've got two types of dedicated cores now, both ray tracing and AI. And of course, our regular CUDA cores are there for you know, both graphical and computational capabilities. But it really is being driven by our customers and our um, independent software vendor ecosystem that really push us to develop crazy things, whether it be you know, RenderMan, whether it be SolidWorks and Cartier, um, you know, Dassault, um, you know, the Autodesk products, uh, Unreal, so many different tools here which, which drive us and, and uh, drive our cards and our development. Next slide, please. So, as I said, we're focused in a couple of different areas and not all of these may uh, be relevant for you. I wanna focus on the last one just for a second here, VR. And this is really important because the, the barrier to entry on VR is actually lowered quite a lot. You'll see in a minute, there's a rather a busy slide. I've got, it's got you know, all the different capabilities. And VR is now fully capable on Lenovo mobile range uh, down to the um, NVIDIA A3000 cards. So a lot of flexibility to have portability in that space as well, which is really quite key, as well as these other features here as well. Next slide, please. So if we look at the cards we have available today, uh, and this is just a smattering of them, in fact, um, since uh, I put this together, there's been at least one change here, which I'll highlight for you, some really great bits and pieces. Um, now, I said nobody wants to buy a card because it looks good on a desk. They look pretty good on a desk. <laughs> this is our latest generation, it looks really fantastic. Um, but more importantly, it's a case of which one suits your purposes, or perhaps which ones, plural, may you use in either a desktop or a laptop form factor. Next slide, please. So let's take a look at those and see which ones you may choose for what reasons. And I want to just compare and contrast just very briefly for you, the previous generation, which was Turing, which was called Quadro RTX, and now the ARMP generation, which is called just RTX. So we're going to go from the low to the high because you've got various different needs. I'll just talk about you know, which ones do what and why. And of course, there's a lot more information we've got available uh, around this. Now, obviously, um, you know, we've, we've had cards which have had a very similar naming convention for many years. So there's a 4,000, and a 5,000, and a 6,000. We did briefly introduce the RTX uh, Quadro 8,000, um, but that's, uh, we no longer have an 8,000 card anymore. So sure enough, we've got a four, a five, and a 6,000 card as well. So most people say, hey, I'm on a 5,000, I'll go to the next 5,000. But I want to highlight to you these little green boxes and numbers I've written here, because it's actually important to understand the power changes we've had here. So let's take, for example, the Quadro RTX 5000, the previous generation. A lot of cores and 16 gig of memory. The new 5000 has double the memory almost. It's gone from 16 to 24, which is a really big jump. But the number of cores has doubled. For the RTX 4000 to the RTX A4000, memory has doubled, cores are almost tripled. For the RTX Six and eight thousands, which were identical except for memory. Uh, uh, Six thousand had twenty-four gig. The eight thousand had forty-eight, um, but same number of cores. The RTX A six thousand, which is our flagship most powerful card, has more than double the cores and forty-eight gig of memory. And if you combine two of those together, you get um, you know, over ninety gig of memory, which is just madness. So at the high end of our cards, things have changed an awful lot. I'm going to touch on that A2000 in just a minute because that's a crazy popular card and there's a really good form factor to put it in as well from uh, friends at Lenovo and Jill will talk about that. But at the lower end, and I'll skip the 2000 just for a second, we've got our 1000, our 600 and our 400 cards. 
And they're great for entry level. They're decent for display walls and things like that as well, depending on what you're doing. But what's interesting, the T1000 is just about to have its memory doubled from four gig to eight. So lots of options, um, lots of choices, uh, lots of capabilities. Just depends on where you want to be. But as I said, you may be changing the, the particular version you use going from a, a, four, a 5,000 to a four or a 6,000 down to a five, or go for top of the pops, most powerful card, the A6000. Next slide, please. Now, I, uh, I want to really highlight these three here because they can do some really magical things. The five and 6,000 cards are capable of what we call NVLink. And this is where you put a bridge on the top of two cards that are next to each other, or maybe one slot apart, and connect them up. And they become graphically and computationally, well, one giant card. So we're talking, uh, you, know, uh, you know, 96 gig of memory, and uh, that's over 21,000 cores. Uh, it's a powerful A6000. Or the 5,000, 48 gig of memory, and uh, I don't know, so I can't remember the number of cores, but it's pretty powerful. The A4000 doesn't support NVLink, so just to be aware of that. But in itself, it's an extremely powerful card. And as I said, we've got customers who are on the previous generation of RTX 5000 cards going down to the A4000 because it does more than what they need. Next slide, please. Now, I did uh, mention that I've got way too much information on one slide. This is the slide and you can download it um, from our website. It's a fully available. I don't want to focus on any one thing here except choice. And I would like to point out that um, I've been talking about the desktop cards, but the same GPUs um, are available in uh, laptop form factor or mobile as well as desktop, with the exception of the A6000, it's just a bit too chunky. So flexibility is there for you. And depending on what you need, how much memory, how many cores, do you need virtual reality, do you need what do you need? There's a whole bunch of capabilities for you here. So lots of choice and variability. And this, um, which is freely available off our website, will tell you all the bits and pieces when you're comparing uh, what you need. Especially if you're looking to jump generations, a really handy eye chart here for you to check with, but not gonna focus on it too heavily today. Next slide, please. So I did wanna to touch very briefly on our friend, the A2000. Now, for those of you who know our cards, you might go, oh yeah, you've had previously the P2000 or we've upgraded to the P2200 and okay, you've got a new version of it. But I wanna point out a couple of things here. The first thing is it's changed its design. So it used to be a single width, full height card. It's now a half height card, but double width. So it's been squashed. But that means it can go into much more small form factor boxes. More importantly, if you have a look at the number of cores, they've almost tripled. As for memory, and this slide is slightly outdated, um, it says it's gone from five gig to six gig. In fact, the new version of the card will have 12 gig of memory on it. So for those of you looking for, well, not certainly not entry level, but mid range um, boxes that you wanna um, you know, put your systems out there and you think, ah, we can't do a small form factor because we can't get, for example, an, an A4000 into it. I highly recommend you have a look at this card. It is absolutely um, a powerhouse and it's really, really, really um, cheap and good bang for buck. Lots of flexibility. Plus the irony is comparing uh, the current generation of A2000 to its predecessor, it actually uses less power. It's gone down to a 70 watt versus 75 watts. Craziness. Right? And I'll talk about my favorite form pack to put this in just a minute. Next slide, please. And here we have it. Um, Jalil will give you a lot more information around this. And I, I believe uh, this is coming out early next year, but the P350 will fit one of these in there. Absolutely terrific, right? And as I said, it's going to uh, 12 gig as well. So absolutely uh, amazing capabilities. Um, and as a beyond entry level, really, really good. So something to think about. Next slide, please. So, um, the other question we often get is in terms of performance, is there a really big jump here? And I would say to you, absolutely yes. And whilst I'm focused in this case, specifically on the A2000, the same goes for the A4000, A5000 and A6000. Compared to their predecessors, the, the relative performance has gone up quite considerably, sometimes up to uh, over, well over two times, depending on your particular workloads. Um, but uh, the power you can get in your, your graphics card, your bang for buck, uh, has gone up quite considerably with the current generation. So if you've come from the P2000 
P generation um, or the Turing generation, um, you'll see some really incredible uh, jumps in performance. Next slide, please. So something else I'd like to touch on because we do get these questions a lot is we get comparisons of our professional brands, so RTX or Prebs and Quadro, and our consumer brand, which is GeForce. And people often say, hey, it's the same car. They're both made by NVIDIA. So, but the professional cards cost a lot more. So why don't I just go with the cheap one? Why don't I just do that? And honestly, it's actually a really good question. And there are some times when I strongly recommend the GeForce cards. Um, it's not in my, my um, uh, purview, but literally sometimes it is appropriate. It depends on what you're after. So let's touch on those features just briefly. Next slide, please. So um, let's have a bit of a look at what a workstation is, because whether I'm talking about that P350 or bluntly my favorite box from, from Lenovo, which is the P620, um, the Threadripper box, um, these are workstations. They're not PCs. So when we talk about workstations, we are talking about enterprise grade kit. We're talking about certification. We're talking about supportability. We're talking about capabilities, whether it's talking about the storage, the, the, um, the awesome Intel um, CPUs in there, the Xeons. And again, Xeon versus the um, i series. Again, very different, similar to our professional cards versus consumer. Um, we're talking about the testing they go through, and here it refers to mil spec testing. Um, and again, you know, Jalil has got a lot more information on this and expertise than I do. But fundamentally, a workstation is a different thing than a PC. And the same goes for our professional cards. So when you're looking at something that has the capability for long-term support, reliability, and performance, as well as supportability, you want different things out of a workstation, and in our case, a professional graphics card, than you do out of a consumer graphics card. Next slide, please. So we have our professional range for precisely this region. So yes, a lot more memory. People who do consumer things, Generally, and feel free to compare the cards that the maximum you can do in a consumer GPU is you know around the 20 odd gig mark. Um, hey, that's you know around the, a little bit more than the 4000 series cards. You know, we've got um, more than half of that in our low uh, A2000 card. Um, I've touched on the ISV certifications, but this is where you get guaranteed outcome and also you get support from the vendors. Nothing worse than calling up with your Autodesk, Desalt, Cartier, you know, problem which by the way is for a staff member who is usually paid a lot of money and the business depends on them to generate IP. And uh, I don't know if it's gonna work or not, it's not really supported. Can you please recreate that on a supported system? That's not what you wanna hear in your time of need. So going for our professional cards ensures that you don't get those answers. Plus you get support from us at NVIDIA. With the GeForce cards, it's best effort. It's, and it is quite literally best effort and forums. So good luck. Enterprise support, You've paid for an enterprise product, whether you go through Lenovo or direct to us, you get support. But of course, we provide tooling and telemetry, and there's some really great systems uh, on uh, tool sets on your, um, on your Lenovo boxes to be able to uh, change uh, performance profiles and, and tweak things um, because it's integrated with our tool set. And we talk about application profiles where you can say, I want an application that's more 3D oriented or more computer oriented or a mix of the two. We've got some other bits and pieces as well, whether we're talking about display walls and things like that, to be able to have you know, really strong uh, outputs that are highly synchronized and scale to you know, a dozen cards, if you wish, across multiple chassis. Um, but there's also performance enhancements as well. So there's a lot of things here that make a really big difference on the quadro features, the professional features that are just not in the uh, consumer side. And sometimes people say, yeah, but how much is it? And I'll highlight one thing, you know, I mentioned before, you know, if you buy a professional card, an RTX card or a Quadro card, that's actually manufactured by us. And it's manufactured by us to our data center standards. So it's designed to run 24 seven, 365, literally. But the gaming cards, they're not manufactured by us. They're actually manufactured by third party manufacturers. So we're talking about the Gigabytes, the MSIs, those sort of people, right? They make great cards. They're designed to be run hard, game, and turn off. They're not designed to be run 24 7, 365. So, for example, whether you get yourself a P350 or a, um, one of the larger 900 series, or you know, my favorite, the P620, when you put our cards in it, our, our professional cards actually blow air out the back of the card, not into the chassis, but out the back. 
So let's compare now it works versus it's designed to work at optimal performance. If you vent air back into the chassis, you're affecting storage, you're affecting CPU, you're affecting the GPU. And if you've got two cards that are next to each other, one of them will be blowing air into the next one on a consumer card. In a quadro system, in a professional system, in a workstation system, the air is vented at the back and therefore fresh cold air is vented into the system and it's designed to work that way. Longevity. People often say it's not working as well as it should and the answer is correct. It's overheated and it's actually powered down slightly. That happens a lot and then we compare professional to consumer cards. Next slide please. And of course, you know, I have mentioned that there are different drivers. I would literally say um, literally half the value of our professional cards is in the software stack. They are literally different drivers engineered to do different things. The game ready drivers, which are updated every couple of weeks, um, and I am a gamer myself, and yes, I do use an NVIDIA card, a 30, uh, 3060 Ti, um, and they have gamer drivers on them, and they work really, really well for the games I play, and that's what they're optimized for. And they only run on, on those uh, you know, gaming GPUs. We also have something called Studio. Now, Studio is really interesting. It sort of straddles halfway between professional and consumer. And, and quite literally, it, it bridges the divide. It's for people who are creatives. So if you're a creative person, so let's talk about the Autodesk suite and things like that, you're designing usually graphical content. And that's what this works for. So it's designed to be halfway between our gaming drivers and our professional drivers. But, and some, some of the studio software, by the way, runs on both GeForce and our RTX Quadro cards. But then we come to Quadro. The Quadro software only works on our professional GPUs only. More importantly, this is the one that when you get those high-end bits of software, so in the mining uh, example, one of my customers gave me the other day, they can pay up to $50,000 for a piece of software. Right? That's gotta work. Now, our drivers, we come in two flavors, you know, optimized for enterprise or new features, and you can choose which one you wanna go with. And often what'll happen is a manufacturer of a software will certify to work on a particular version of our drivers because they know where our branch support is at. And we work hand in glove with them. The software is different. People say, ah, the chips are the same on the cards. They're not, they're similar, but they're not quite the same. But the boards are different, the casings are different, the drivers are different, the manufacturing standards are different. But even if the chip was the same, it's not the same when you put it into a machine. And when you pay good money to get a high quality workstation, just pick on the P620 again because I love it, why would you put something cheap inside it that actually becomes the weakest link? So depending on what you're doing, it's really worthwhile knowing. Next slide, please. So we also talk about performance and I'd just like to highlight this here. You know, um, this is some of our older data on, on tools such as, you know, SolidWorks and, and, you know, you can see the fantastic picture there. Uh, we had something on our um, website, uh, Twitter feed, not long ago, which was real or rendered. And we asked people to guess, is this a real picture or a rendered picture? And people got it right about 50% of the time. And what that tells you is, you can't tell the difference. It's really high performant. Next slide, please. And you can see the difference between GPU and CPU as well. And obviously, when we have people designing extremely high-end devices, and this one, by the way, was worked on with the A2000. Now, this is not the uh, the car we're talking about today or that I have right behind me, uh, which sadly is not mine, uh, but there's a very, very powerful story uh, from a number of automotive manufacturers. And the story uh, behind Aston Martin is absolutely incredible with how they've built on um, you know Lenovo all the way through their business and having our uh, GPUs inside their systems. Next slide, please. And of course, the thing I started with, and I really want to finish with this for you, because it's actually really, really important. As I said, you're not going to buy a GPU to keep on the desk. There's no point doing that. You're going to put that into a system. Whether you want the mobile form factor, and some of my favorite mobile, by the way, is the P1. I just can't get enough of that. It's just amazing. Or whether you go for a desktop form factor, small, medium, or large. Um, and you might have a use case around artificial intelligence, which is computer oriented or graphically oriented for entry level workloads, people who are consuming, or people who are generating content. There's a, there's a variety of choices for you on both the platforms and just as more importantly, the GPUs as well, and the CPUs, 
and the memory and the storage and all those bits and pieces. So we are one part of that design and I encourage you to talk um, both to us, but especially to your Lenovo team because they really are the experts in designing a system that will work really, really well for you. Next slide, please. So that's the end of my presentation. But having said that, now what we have is a couple of quiz questions. Uh, I believe uh, there, there's something on the line here for you with your quiz, so you gotta get that right. So let's uh, let's pop up those quiz questions. Uh, let's see how we go with that. The first question is, our latest generation of GPUs. What is the name of our latest, most recent generation of GPUs? Is it uh, Kepler, Ampere, Pascal, or Maxwell? And unfortunately, I'm not allowed to vote or win. So which is our latest generation of GPU? Kepler, Ampere, Pascal, or Maxwell? I'll let that sit for a minute. And I'll take the guidance from our, um, our organizer as to when we move on to the next question. I only have two, by the way. Thanks, Michael. I'm just waiting for more votes to come in for the All answers. Good. You've got to be in it to win it, people. If you don't vote, you can't win. Remember that. So. Yeah. so I'll probably give it another maybe 15 seconds or so just to sure. see. And I'd love to give you bonus points if you could actually tell me what the scientists are, who they are all named on. <laughs> but I don't actually know the answers for myself. I only know two of the answers, I think. So yes, no, three. All right, I'm closing the poll right now and then let's see what the answers are. Let's see how we went. And 45% of you were correct. The most recent generation for NVIDIA, which is in green, is in fact Ampere. So thank you for that. All right, let's have a look at the next question. And I'm gonna give you a bit of a uh, tip. It's a trick question. So don't jump to an answer. Have a bit of a look at it carefully. So what's our most high performing desktop GPU? I said, be very, very careful looking at this. There's a sudden jump that people make. So I have the RTX A3000, we have the RTX 8000, we have the RTX A6000, and the RTX A4000. Which one of those is the most powerful desktop GPU? The A3000, the A8000, the A6000, or the A4000? I can see the answers are coming in a little slower. I think people are yeah. really looking into it. That's, as I said, it's a trick question. So I'm warning you though, I'm warning you. So, uh, you know, and again, keep in mind um, that you know, uh, when you need to figure these things out um, in, in real life, uh, you have obviously the guidance that we can provide and also Jalil and her team for some fantastic guidance on uh, which, what, where, how, why, and how to put it together as well. So the poll question doesn't necessarily reflect on what you can do in real life, right? But, um, Yes, so A2000, A6000, A4000. And take a yeah. tip from the last Michael, question. Michael, this is tricky, Michael. No, I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I feel bad now. I feel bad. <laughs> but when somebody wins, I won't feel bad, right? Yeah. I'm closing the poll right now. Let's see what they say. Wait, just let me share the results. Yes, 69%. Oh, correct. A6000. So the trick question was the 8000. It's a bigger number. But it's the, it doesn't have an A in front, so it's not the lowest generation, which is why I put the other question before. Yep. So, and just a quick note, the A3000 is only available in mobile form factor, is an interesting point. Um, and that is our entry-level virtual reality card. So if you want to use VR in mobile, I'm sure Jill can sort you out there in some way, shape or form, get the A3000, bam, you're all good to go. So uh, for, for, um, for VR as well. And that concludes my section. So, uh, I believe, Jalil, I'm handing over to you now. Yep. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, Michael. That's a very Thank good very session. Much. Thank you for All your good. time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to start off with a video. Yeah. So this is um, kind of fresh from the oven. Let's enjoy this short video.
Hi, uh, good afternoon to every one of you. Yes, um, thanks for attending, taking time to attend this session today. My name is Jay Liu Ng. I'm the Workstation Business Manager um, from Lenovo and uh, covering uh, Singapore as well as Indonesia. Okay, uh, I think um, you know some of you have attended my session before, so I try not to repeat some of the things, but uh, I think the last time we had this was like a year ago, so I think it's important for me to share some of the latest and greatest that we have in the Workstation space. Okay, next slide, please. So we saw the, you know, uh, Baby Boss 2, right? So why I want to put that in? Because it's December, okay? It's like a festive season. And um, Lenovo has just announced this um, collaboration that we have with DreamWorks, okay? So they are actually purchasing our uh, P620 and a P920 uh, moving forward for all the designing of the um, movies, okay? Like the bad guys, the boss, um, the boss baby 2 that you watched just now. Okay, so I uh, just want to let you know what is the latest that we have in the m and &E space. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, what I'm going to cover today, um, mostly to cover the portfolio to refresh what are the uh, new models that we have on the desktop workstation, the mobile workstation, as well as the Think Vision P series, because we also have uh, introduced some new series of monitor, which will be helpful for you. Okay, uh, and then of course, a smart guidance for the best workstation configuration, like what are the things you have to take care of when you want to choose different component. Okay, um, and I will touch a bit on the NVIDIA card that's available on our workstation too. Okay, then industry solution. Okay, um, you know, be it whether you are from AEC, uh, you're from manufacturing, um, maybe even in finance um, segment. Okay, what are the different um, config that you should be going for, especially some of you when you're working from home, then uh, which one should you go for? Which one should you choose? Okay, I do get this question all the time, so I'm going to share that with you. And then why Lenovo Workstation? Okay, uh, next slide, please. So stay tuned um, because the quiz question for quiz three and quiz one will be up. So uh, do stay alert and then listen to it and then that will get you extra uh, grab voucher. Okay. So let's look at the portfolio itself on the workstation as well as our monitor. So for the P-Series workstation portfolio, let's cover the desktop workstation. We are right now for the entry level uh, for 2D and 3, uh, 3D entry CAD CAM. Okay. Uh, you can actually use our P350. Okay. Uh, 350 will be our um, entry level desktop workstation. And we have three different form factor. We still have the tiny, the small form factor, and the uh, tower model, okay? Then as we move to the mid-range, we will have the P520C and the P520. This is the uh, good range for you to go for if you're doing basic rendering, analysis, simulation, uh, 3D CAD design, okay? So it's still on the single processor. Of course, uh, not forgetting our single processor, but the one and only uh, AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro machines, which is P620, okay? Moving to the dual processor, uh, we have the P720 and the P920. So if you need the bigger graphic cards, okay, then you will have to go for the bigger boxes because uh, basically people will use these two model for mainstream rendering, analysis, simulation, or you need to do AI solutions. This will be the best fit for you. And it can go up to the dual uh, Intel processor. So the only one that is running AMD is the P620. The rest of them are running the Intel processor. Okay, not forgetting our P920 rack. Uh, this is the uh, only workstation that is running um, the server OS, okay, Windows server OS. Uh, it's a rack mount version and it takes up to you from factor. So people usually use it more for virtualization solutions such as uh, Citrix, uh, VMware, okay. Then look at the mobile workstation itself. So for mobile workstation, we have our P14S and P14S AMD Gen 2. Okay, so this is the only model uh, in the mobile workstation range that support uh, Intel processor as well as AMD. So you have to decide which uh, processor do you want, okay? So it's our entry level 14 inch machines, okay? Uh, mobile workstation. If you want exactly the same on the Intel platform, but you want it in 15 inch, that is the P15S Gen 2, okay? So uh, this will be price affordable mobile workstation. Then if you move a bit um, on this, you know, mid-range end, uh, we have the value of performance model of our P14, uh, P15V, okay, plus T15P Gen 2. 
Okay, the T series that you are seeing in the workstation range, uh, T15 P Gen 2 and the T15 G Gen 2, these are the only two models that only support GE Force Card. Okay, only support GE Force Card. It doesn't support uh, any of the uh, RTX or Quadro card. Okay, uh, then if you move up a bit, you see our ThinkPad P1 Gen 4. Okay, right now we are in the Gen 4. This is a collaboration with Ashton Martin, like what you're seeing on my background, right? Okay, so uh, started from P1, they have been using our P1 uh, since Gen 1. Okay, so now we are into Gen 4, and this is the perfect uh, balance of a um, power and mobility. What do we mean by that? Meaning that it's the, one of the lightest weight with the highest um, GPU that you can support. So it's a one and only 16 inch. Okay, pay attention to that. Huh? I always drop hint. Yeah, 16 inch machine. So the rest of them are either 14, 15 or 17 inch. We only have one 16 inch, which is the P1 Gen 4. Um, with non-touch screen, it's about 1.8 kg. Uh, touch screen is still below 2 kg. So it's very lightweight. I'm using a P1 Gen 3 myself. Okay, so this is what the quality that you're seeing. Uh, when you look at me presenting, you can see there's no lag at all. Okay, then we have a P15 Gen 2 and P70 Gen 2. Both of them will support a different um, processor with GPU combination. Okay, for P1 Gen 4, it support um, all the way up the RTX A5000, but with selective iCore uh, processor. Okay, the Xeon model will only support A2000. That's how it works. Okay, whereas for P15 and P17, the graphic card is the daughter card. So you can have mix and match different um, processor with the graphic card. Okay, so for P15 Gen 2 and P17 Gen 2, the only main difference is the screen size. Okay, so this cover the entire portfolio we have in Lenovo. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so um, typically people will say, so which model should I go for? So uh, the common question I will usually ask is that what kind of application you're running? So on the right side, you see all the different application and it also depends whether, uh, what kind of workflow, okay? Are you using it for AR, VR? Are you using it for uh, video editing, etc. Okay, if your application is single threaded application, you will go for low core count, high frequency, meaning that you can go for maybe your eight core machines or a 12 core machines, uh, but the frequency will be higher. Okay, that will give you better performance. But if you are running a multi threaded application, high core count, okay, uh, low frequency will be uh, your choice. Okay, maybe you can go to 16, even the, you know, some of you will go for 20 over core. Okay, so it's possible. Okay, go up to over 28 core. Okay, but lower frequency and GPU intensive, meaning that you definitely have to go for a higher uh, graphic card, okay? So this will help you to understand the positioning we have for our workstation. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, we announced our mobile workstation um, this year, okay, from the P14S, P15S Gen 2, all the way up to P17. So, uh, you notice that at, um, it's all the way from June to uh, September, all these were announced, okay? So it depends on the price versus the performance. So you have to see um, how much budget you have, okay? What kind of performance you're looking for, and then which one you should be going for, okay? So they will tell you exactly the screen size that you're looking at, okay? Uh, the, you know, uh, the weight of each machine, okay? And the graphic card that is supported. So this is how we position. So I think one thing I want to highlight is that it does not mean that when you buy a P15 Gen 2, you'll be more expensive than a P1 Gen 4. Uh, it all depends on the spec you're looking at. Okay, uh, if it's exactly the same pack, uh, same spec, you may be getting, uh, you may find that it's cheaper to get a P15 Gen 2 versus P1 Gen 4 because P1 Gen 4 is actually go for the mobility. So it's lightweight. So the, the price may be a bit higher than the P15 Gen 2. But P15 Gen 2 actually support more graphic card versus, uh, with um, your processor combination. So that's why the position is different and it will come with a slightly heavier weight. Okay, yeah. Next slide, please. So this help you to see the uh, how we position our product against the competitors like Dell and HP. So in case you get a, a different quotation, right? Like maybe from Dell is a 7550, you wonder which one should you map 
two, you can actually refer to this, okay, like a 7550 equivalent will be our P15 Gen 2. But if you're looking at a uh, 550, no, 5550 uh, replacement, okay, in the Lenovo will be a P1 Gen 4, okay. So you notice that uh, Lenovo actually have a full fledged of a uh, different mobile workstation that cater to your needs all the way from an entry level to a high performance level, yeah. Next slide, please. We have the same slide for desktop workstation to help you to uh, map it across, okay. Next slide. Okay, uh, I do have the brochure, uh, you know, with the lockdown and working from home, we realized that it's, instead of printing the hard copy of um, all these brochures, I usually put it into my slide so that you can actually have a reference point, okay. So for the desktop workstation, you can look at the power supply that is supported. Okay, the um, the size, the storage, the graphic card, we list out all the graphic card that's supported. Um, and you can actually refer to this to know uh, what kind of processor is also supported. Okay, I think one thing I want to highlight for desktop workstation is the power supply. Okay, uh, as mentioned by Michael just now, right? Uh, the graphic card itself, if you're looking at the A series of graphic cards, some of them can go all the way up to 300 watt. Okay, it requires 300 watt in order to run. So you do not want to uh, go for a machine that is only like um, 380 and then you, you're going to use 300 watt just for a graphic card. Then I wouldn't advise you to do that. Okay, so you notice we have different options of uh, power supply. Like I'm quoting an example of a P350. You may want to go for the higher range. Uh, like a uh, 750 watt, you know, that, that kind of uh, options when you choose your workstation, okay? So take note of that and uh, code accordingly, okay? Uh, make sure that you choose the right one, yeah. Okay, uh, next slide, please. I do have it for the uh, desktop workstation uh, from P620 to P920 Rec 2. Okay, this will be our higher range of the desktop workstation, okay? Next slide. So if you are looking for mobile workstation, you can refer to the product comparisons over here. Uh, this will indicate the different weight. So a P14S can be as lightweight as a 1.47 kg, but uh, when you go you know, to a different model, then you will see a different weight indication because it's also dependent on the graphic card that you've chosen, uh, the hard disk, etc. Okay, next slide. So P1, okay, so the weight is actually stated over here. Okay, so you can, uh, you know, without touch screen, it's only 1.8 kg. So even though it's, um, you know, 16 inch, but when you carry it around, you don't feel the weight at all. Yeah, because it's, it's very light, yep. Then when you look at the T15G, right, so the graphic card supported will be the GE Force card. Okay, so for customer who are running, um, you know, some customer are running um, Lumion and then you will, telling me that actually it, it works better with G Force card. Then for such cases, you may want to consider taking a T15G Gen 2, okay? But uh, bear in mind that our P1 Gen 4 and the P15 Gen 2 and P17 Gen 2, these three model actually support the G Force card too, okay? So you can have a, you know, a different model, not necessarily just a T-series, yeah. Next slide. Okay, so when you have a good workstation, okay, be it whether it's a mobile workstation or desktop workstation, it's also important for you to invest uh, a bit on your monitors, okay? So we do offer the P-series monitor and this range will help you to do things such as uh, making sure that you get 10 bit that is uh, offering over 1 billion of colors, uh, 4K display, okay? Uh, maybe you want a USB Type-C uh, and Thunderbolt connectivity, Okay, or maybe you want to have a daisy chain to multiple monitors. Okay, and then most important, eye comfort. Okay, we're going to look at the screen so often, we want to make sure that we get uh, eye comfort. So we do have this TUV eye comfort built in, uh, desktop partition. So you can actually do it with Lenovo P series monitor. Okay, next slide, please. So I have a slide showing uh, the latest model that we have, the P32, P20. Uh, okay. Uh, so it, it can range from 24 inch all the way up to uh, our highest range will be 40 W, that means the white screen. Okay, the white screen will be a bit on the curved side. So if you like uh, a white screen rather than having two monitor, you can also do so. Okay, so do approach our uh, account manager or our business partner if you need uh, any of this uh, monitor together with the desktop workstation. Next slide, please. 
Okay, quiz three. Which mobile workstation has 16 inch screen? Okay, I actually give a very big hint for this. Okay, there's only one model. Okay, so it shouldn't go wrong. And remember, it's the latest model that is available. Okay, let's see. I hope to get 100%. So, Amelia, are the answers coming in? They are. I'm just waiting for more to come in. But we also want to remind that everyone needs to get three out of four of the questions correct. So, this is already our third question. So, if they, if they got the first two correct, well, this is their third chance. Otherwise, there's only one more question. Okay. Vote wisely. <laughs> Okay, I think it's easy. It's just right there. The answer is just right there. Yeah. And I've dropped very big hint. Okay, I'll close the poll now and let's see mm -hmm. what happens. Yeah, okay. So we have 81% got um, getting it correctly. Okay, so um, yes, P1 Gen 4. Because P1 Gen 4 is 16 inch. Uh, P1 Gen 3 was 15, uh, T15P and P15V definitely is 15 inch, as you can see from the number. So the only one that don't follow the number connection, you know, like um, using like 15 for 15 inch and then 14 for 14 inch and 17 is P1, okay? Because it's our Hello product and uh, usually we don't follow that kind of a naming convention, okay? So it's a 16 inch machine, okay? Yes, P1 Gen 4. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, um, after touching on the portfolio, I think the most important thing next is how then to choose the best workstation. Okay, next slide. I had done this uh, presentation from time to time, okay, and uh, but I still get the same questions coming in. So I thought it's good for us to refresh our memory and uh, take a look at this again. Okay, so when you look at processor, memory, graphic, storage so which one should you invest in okay it should be everything it's like yoga okay everything is important but choose the right options okay next slide so we start off with a processor when we look at processor as i mentioned in the earlier slide okay it depends whether you're running single threaded application or multi-threaded okay single threaded always go for high clock speed okay uh and then um if you are doing multi-threaded application you will go for higher core count okay so high clock speed for single threaded app multi-threaded you go for higher core count okay so some of the applications are shown below so you know that is are you running single threaded app or you're running multi-threaded so multi-threaded applications are typical like uh, things that uh, all the applications that you run on the ai uh, your engineering simulation rendering like your nc simulator your autodesk cfd Okay, these are the common app that is uh, require you to ha higher number of core count. Okay, next slide. So memory. Okay, um, I have stressed on this before. Uh, Lenovo's uh, recommendation is four gig per core. If you have um, four core machines, sixteen gig. Okay, so that is how you do calculation, and this does not only apply to workstation. You also apply to your notebook and your desktop. Okay. So I do have a guidance of uh, like 16 gig for solid metering, uh, 32 gig for large assembly, 64 gig for simulation. Okay, and currently you look at the memories is available uh, that is available in Lenovo will be from 2666 all the way to 3200. Okay, uh, most of them is 3200 right now. So that's the latest that's available. Uh, just bear in mind that you do not mix memory um, in the same machine. Okay, you can do that, but you'll be running all at the lower speed. Okay, if you mix two pieces of 2666 with another two pieces of 3200 or run at 2666. Okay, just bear in mind on that. Uh, ECC memory only available with an uh, Intel Xeon processor. Okay, uh, and then the, which is better, right? If you have four team slots, should you go for four times eight? Okay, or should you go for two times 16 or one times 32 if you need 32 gig of memory? Okay, the rule of thumb is go for four times eight. Okay, populate all the channel that's available because that it's exactly like a highway, right? Uh, whether you take a, a CTE or PIE, uh, the more lanes, less traffic. So just remember that, more lanes, less traffic, okay? Uh, then the next thing you may ask is that if I occupy all the dim slot, next time I want to upgrade, what should I do? 
I will suggest that you recycle all the old memory, okay? Uh, upgrade all the four to become the latest memory, okay? And then the old one, you can put it into uh, another machines that uh, your user do not have such heavy workload, okay? So this will be a recommendation because if you mix memory in the same machine, you are getting a lower speed, okay? So that will be uh, affect the performance of the workstation, okay? Next slide, please. Another component is, of course, the NVIDIA graphic card. Okay, so for the desktop graphic card, we offer all the way up the RTX A6000, which is a 48 gig card. Okay, so 20% of um, the customer will be using the higher range card, like RTX A4000 and above, but 80% will be using. Um, okay, so A4000 is like sitting in between. So there's still quite a fair bit of uh, user actually using A4000, but we do have people who use the lower range like a T400 or the T600, okay? Maybe you're just using some SketchUp, you're using AutoCAD, uh, but you do not need a lot of the, the wire, you know, the higher range of a graphic card, okay? So the A2000 has just been announced. That's why I put available in November, December. So you may not see it earlier on. So now it's available and you can actually get the A2000, which is a replacement for the P2000 and the P2200 previously. Okay, so this is a very good card for you to go for if you want a mid-range card. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So that was the desktop um, graphic card, right? When you look at a mobile graphic card, all the way up to A5000. A5000 is a 16 gig card. Okay, uh, it will sit in the most of our mobile workstation from P1 all the way up to P17 Gen 2. Okay, so you will see a different range of um, cut over here. Uh, the one that is um, only available in mobile workstation is the RTX A3000. You do not see in the desktop workstation. Okay, only offered in mobile workstation. Okay, so this is the full range that you have. Uh, that we are offering with our workstation. So very important for you to choose the right one. Yeah. Next slide. Okay, uh, you see the same slide when Michael did the uh, presentation. I thought this would be a good uh, you know, slide for you to do a comparison of a uh, different graphic card. Okay, whether it's a, uh, uh, should you go for the A2000 or whether you should go for uh, the uh, A3000 on the laptop GPU. So it all depends on the application you're running. Do you need VR? Do you know what kind of uh, CUDA processing core you need? Yeah, so do a comparison, okay? Sometimes, um, you know, you may see like so many four gig card in the laptop, right? Uh, then you wonder which is the right one that you should be choosing, okay? So it depends on the CUDA core, yeah. Okay, next slide. Okay, not forgetting storage, right? Storage is very important. Um, when you look at storage itself, uh, if you, you know, are still using your SATA hard disk, it only run at 200 to 300 megabit per second. So that could be the point where you say that, hey, how come I'm not getting the performance that I'm looking for? Okay, your hard disk could be a, a older hard disk, okay? A SATA SSD is running double the speed, but right now everybody is talking about M.2. So my suggestion is that at least have one piece of M.2, be it whether it's 256 or uh, 512, as a boot up um, hard disk, and also for you to put your OS, your app, your cache file, your project file. Then your archiver and storage can sit on the SATA SSD or a SATA hard disk, okay? But for our mobile workstation, that means the, the notebook, right? The notebook range, the ThinkPad P-Series, all of them are using M.2 only. We do not uh, offer SATA SSD and SATA hard disk anymore. Only for desktop workstation, you can have a mix, yeah. Okay, next slide, please. So we have uh, covered all the different components. I think the next thing what I want to cover will be the industry solution, okay? Let's look at uh, each in um, vertical itself. So like for AEC, so what should you be going for? If you are running 3D beam and 2D documentation, I would suggest you go for a P350 tower or a P1 Gen 4, okay? I have actually have a suggested uh, spec stated there. You can take a look at it, okay? If you are doing more complex 3D beam and visualization, then you may want to go for a P520, which is a mid-range uh, desktop workstation, or a P15 Gen 2, okay? So this is typically used for like, uh, if you're going to do digital fabrication, scan to beam, beam on the go, uh, AI, IoT, et cetera, okay? So, and some of the application you'll be looking at will be the Revit, the V-Ray, the, the Lumion. So it's meant for the AEC industry, okay? We stand for architecture, engineering, and construction, yeah. 
Next slide, please. Okay, this will be more for manufacturing professionals. So if you come from a manufacturing uh, company and then uh, you're looking for something to use for your high performance 3D design and engineering, a P35 or a P1 Gen 4 can do the job. But if you need to do visualization and simulation, uh, go for the mid-range, the P520C or P520 and um, P15 Gen 2 if you are looking at the mobile workstation. Uh, why is it important to have a comparison uh, or rather an option of a mobile workstation uh, together with a desktop workstation? Because some of you are actually working from home. So you may want a good mobile workstation to work on when you're at home, okay? So I have actually gave both options. And then uh, if you're doing complex uh, multi-physics, then that's where uh, ThinkStation P920 will be the best fit for it. So a typical uh, application will be like similar, SOLIDWORK, uh, CARTIA, etc. Okay, next slide. How about media entertainment? Okay, so uh, 2D, 3D animation, you can choose that. And then if you're doing something more complex, that's where you have to go for the P720 and P920. And for that range, if you were to use a mobile workstation, it can be a bit tougher for you because uh, you're going to do a lot of uh, animation editing and creative and you you need more powerful machine. That is where uh, P720 and P920 will be a better fit. Okay, yep. Next slide. So the top three industry in Singapore will be uh, what I have covered just now, the AEC, the manufacturing and the uh, media entertainment. Okay, but for finance services, okay, sometimes the traders, right? So what does a trader need? Okay, a trader, I would recommend at least a P720 because it's very important for to make sure that every minute count, right? So uh, we, we don't want to miss any of the transaction. So that is a suggestion, go for P720 or at least a P15, P70 Gen 2, okay? Uh, front office itself, okay, or maybe for the engineering staff, what they can use is a P520C or P520 with a P1 Gen 4. Okay, uh, the back office, the retail admin, people who are doing more the admin and support team, you can go for the uh, entry level range, which is the P350 with a P14S or P15S. Okay, so that is how we position it. Yeah, next slide, please. Okay, what if you're doing AI solution? I think everybody is looking into AI, right? It becomes um, like so important in uh, as a solution be it whether you come from AEC, manufacturing, M&E, etc. Okay, so if you're looking into a machine to do, uh, you know, deep learning and then you need a large machine, a P920, okay, will be the best fit for you. Okay, uh, if you're doing development work, that's where we can go for the mid-range, is a P520. Okay, but if you need to do uh, design ISV, that, there's a range of like P920 all the way uh, to the entry level of P350. Okay, edge computing, you can go for P520 and a P350, okay, etc. So uh, if you prefer to work from home and then you need a P-series uh, thing pack, of course, we have different range to cater to your needs. Okay, so there's a suggested spec there because uh, this could range, if it's a Xeon, it could range from a different mobile workstation that can cater to your needs. So it depends whether you're using it for development, large machine or deep learning. Yeah, next slide, please. So for oil and gas, you can also refer to this slide. I'm not going to go deep into each one of them. Okay, so this is very good reference slide for you uh, when you're looking for a uh, different workstation for your workflow. Yeah, next slide. Okay, not forgetting on the uh, our healthcare professional. Okay, so um, we actually work with some of our ISV that is uh, using or, or rather SI uh, using like our P three five O tiny. And then they put in um, some of the application and customize it uh, for the need for healthcare. Okay, so if you do work on such projects, okay, or you have such needs, you can approach us. Okay, and then we will uh, help you to, you know, uh, work on some of the machines because we do have OEM team that will take care of that. Okay, thank you. Next slide. Okay, um, I mentioned about our P920 rack in the earlier part of the presentation. So if you need like VMware solution uh, for your virtualization deployment or Citrix, okay, then you can look into uh, getting the uh, P920 rack, okay, because it runs server OS. Yep. Okay, next slide. 
VR. For VR, we do work with uh, HTC Vive, Oculus, or even Vajo. Vajo is not so popular in Singapore yet, but you will see it uh, coming in soon. Okay, it has been a partner that we are working in uh, with them in the US. Yeah. Okay, next slide. Okay, so if you're only running Autodesk software and you are running the AEC collection, then we have a spec over there for you to refer to. Okay, or maybe you just run AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, or Revit with AutoCAD only. Okay, then the spec will be quite different because you are not running the rest of the application that was stated in the earlier slide. Okay, then uh, this will help you to understand better yep, uh, what is the right model for your need. Okay, next slide, please. For manufacturing, who is using SolidWorks, okay, uh, whether it's a standard professional or the premium and simulation, you can actually refer to this. Yeah. Next slide. What about Adobe user? Okay, you are using it for Photoshop or Premiere Pro and After Effect. Okay, so the spec um, that you'll be looking for will be slightly lower range than a, a M and E um, user who need to use beyond Adobe. Yeah. Okay. Next slide. Okay, we have covered the uh, industry solutions and all that. Then why make what make us different? Okay, why are we different from our competitors? Okay, so let's look at why Lenovo Workstation. I think design is very important. As uh, mentioned by Michael, right? You have all your graphic card inside there. You want to make sure you have good airflow. And Workstation is meant to be used uh, 24 by 7. Okay, so for that case, uh, good airflow, uh, you know, toolless uh, power supply you need, uh, flex drive, etc will be a very useful um, capability that is built into a desktop workstation or even a mobile workstation. Okay, next slide. Okay, cooling. So we have a patented tri-channel architecture allow uh, each component to receive cool air. So, you know, based on the results that they have tested, uh, we are 60% cooler temperature than other workstation manufacturers. So this is some of the things you have to look at uh, when you buy a workstation beyond just uh, comparing pricing with um, workstation. I know pricing is important, right? I mean, it's like, uh, oh, okay, this this uh, particular vendor is like uh, quoting me uh, maybe 10% cheaper, etc. But do look at the different component that is offered, okay? Like the hard disk offered could be a SATA hard disk versus a M.2. So have to do an apple to apple comparison. I think that's what I try to emphasize. And also the design, okay? You don't want the machines that, um, you know, won't last you uh, more than two years, okay? Then that defeat the purpose of buying a workstation, okay? So we have this tri-channel architecture that allow you to have a um, good cooling system. Okay, next slide. Okay, flex, what does flex? means okay basically we have this thing called flex bay so you can have additional hard disk uh, put in a media card reader uh, put in your optical uh, drive reader etc okay so we do have the flexibility for you to put in different things that you need and we also have different power supply for your need so you don't go for higher power supply if your graphic card that you've chosen is more on the entry level okay so this give you the flexibility and also give you efficient power supply yeah next slide RTX, okay, uh, so RTX card from time to time you see, right, uh, we have gone through so many different generations. Every generation usually will give you at least 1.6x or even 2.2x better performance than the previous graphic card. So it's not that we wanted to change to new graphic card all the time and asking you to pay more for the graphic card, but because you are getting more out of it, you get better performance, okay? Uh, technology change, so it's very important for us to also make sure that we get the latest graphic card for your workstation, okay? Next slide. LPT, okay, Lenovo Performance Tuner come free with all our workstations. So it allow you to do things such as uh, application affinity, uh, application priority. So all you need to do is that all the IS, ISV software that you install, it automatically will light up in the LPT. You just need to click on it and then it will do uh, performance tuning for you. Okay, so uh, this is very important because you can do graphic management, you can do resource monitoring and uh, tuning. Okay, so it makes things easier for you and it optimize the performance, increase the productivity okay, of your uh, workstation. Next slide, please. 
Okay, we actually, um, TBR is a third party um, research company. Okay, so what they do is that every three years they will do this research across uh, different workstation vendor. Okay, and they have tested like um, after a period of maybe three years. Okay, what is the repair rate? Okay, so it, it was tested like first year, second year, third year. So uh, it's proven that uh, Lenovo is at uh, repair rate of maybe 7.8, okay, versus the competitors and the industry, which is as high as 9.7. So that makes us 20% uh, more reliable than our competitors. So this is done by third party. Just want to share that on the reliability. Okay, next slide. Okay, mere spec. So um, I'm not sure whether you're aware. Um, the ThinkPad series, not all the series offer this, so, but P-series definitely is one of them. So all the mobile workstation actually have mere spec, meaning stand for military spec. Uh, it's test for 12 military spec method and 22 procedure. This is to ensure that it can handle any kind of environmental hazard. Okay, solar radiation, uh, humidity, extreme temperature, too high or too low temperature, sand dust, vibration. Okay, this is very important because when you use your mobile uh, workstation when you bring it to the side or when you are out with it, you want to make sure that you can still work on it despite the, the temperature changes, etc. Yeah. Okay. Next slide. ISV certification. Okay. Um, some of them are asking me, can I use a gaming PC or a gaming notebook to do my job? You can do so, but you will not get the ISV certification, meaning that you may not get a accuracy when you come you talk about the color itself uh, or the you know uh, when you do your drawing may see some dotted line etc okay so all our mobile workstation we actually send them for isv certification for all the apps that you are seeing over here yeah okay next slide okay so what is thingstationspec.com if you want to find any information on our workstation you find it in thingstationspec.com Okay, important, uh, thingstationspec.com. This is where you find all the technical information. Okay, I dropped a very big hint already. You shouldn't get it wrong. Okay, thingstationspec.com. Okay, you can find things such as uh, supported component detail, bio certification, environmental certification, platform detail, which are the processor offered uh, on our workstation, be it whether it's a uh, desktop or mobile workstation. Okay, next slide. I have also put together uh, some of the information, like uh, normal product information, you can find in like PS Rev. Technical inf uh, spec is the what you see just now, right? Which is the uh, thingstationspec.com. Then if you want to find compatibility metrics, reference guide, okay, I have all the link over here. So when you get hold of the um, PowerPoint slide, you can just click on it and check it through, okay? And if you're looking for Lenovo solutions uh, on Workstation, you can go to Lenovo Tech today. Okay, then it will show our uh, remote um, remote workstation uh, solution. We also have our AR, VR, etc. Yeah, so you can actually check from there. Yeah. Next slide, please. That comes to the final quiz. Quiz four. Okay, what is the website to check technical product spec? Okay, I actually have one slide just on that just now. Okay, you shouldn't get it wrong. Is it uh, PSREF? Is it thingstationspec.com? Or is it tech today? Okay. Don't get it wrong. You should get like, a, I would expect at least a 95% correct. Yep. Or if you, you can get it 100% means hmm, you have been paying attention to my hints. I can see uh, aggressive votes coming in. <laughs> uh, I hope they give the right answer. Okay, I'm here to help you all to win. Yeah. So stay in the session because at the end of uh, the session, we're going to have lucky draw. Someone is going to walk away with some goodie. All right, I'm, I'm going to close the poll right now. Yep. Oh, not bad. 92%. The other 8%. You miss it, but doesn't matter. Okay, at least we have 92. Okay, so we have come to the end of my session. Am I right? Yes, I'm not sure correct. whether there's any questions. Yeah. Mm. Q&A. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I'll just give this bit of time so that if you have any questions, you can, you can actually put it in the Q&A box. 
Oh, for those of you who I, I know some have actually requested for presentation slides. So uh, do write in to Lenovo SG at Lenovo.com to request for these slides because um, we will only be giving those who have actually requested for, uh, to have these slides. All right. So Lenovo SG at Lenovo.com. Very easy to remember emails for requests on the slides. So let's just give ourselves uh, maybe another minute or so to see whether we have any questions. Uh, unfortunately, Michael had to go off earlier, so, but I believe that if there's anything, we can always still reach out to him after that. And then, of course, Jaleel is still here to answer your question. I think today our, our session is a little bit longer than usual, so there's a lot for them to just absorb and digest first. Any questions? Or you understand perfectly clear. Yeah, since you get 92%. Yeah. Okay. Anytime if you do have any questions and uh, you did not get a chance to answer over here, I mean, to ask the question over here, uh, feel free to reach out to any one of us or you can drop a uh, questions, um, you know, by typing over here. Or you can just approach our BP, you know, our business partner or, you know, any of the account manager and the question will come to me. Yeah. All right, so someone just asked, um, is the P1 Gen 4 upgradable? Uh, okay, so upgradable to, it depends on what you're trying to upgrade to, okay? So my, my answer will be, if you are trying to upgrade and put a different GPU, no, you can't do that, okay? You, you can't change the GPU. Uh, memory, yes, you can add on memories. Okay, so I'm not sure what is the is upgradable to the extent lah. That means you can choose what, what uh you know put in the memory because uh if you're familiar with it lah, you can also do a Google and search. You can just uh, remove the top of the yeah. So the memory is actually at the bottom. Okay, sorry, I was like moving my P1 Gen 3. Yeah, so it's at the bottom. Uh, you can actually just open up and change your, you know, add in more memories if you need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope that answers the question that the person has if asked. If you are very familiar with it, you can always do that. Yeah, but usually people will do more upgrading for their stock workstation because uh, that like graphic cards and all this. Yeah, but mobile, some people may not be very familiar with it. Yeah, so yeah, you can do that. Okay. Um. There's just one more. There's one more question. Uh. What is the docking stations options for P1 Gen 4? What is the docking station? Okay, uh, actually, if you click on the link uh, uh, that I showed earlier on, right, you move up, I think, is it a few slides? The one that shows, yep. So they will show you all the different options. Uh, no, next one. Next slide, one after, yes. Okay, you see a docking station guide? When you click on it, you will also see it and the accessories and option compatibility matrix. Okay, they will show you all the different docking station that is compatible with different model of our workstation. Yeah, so you can just click on it and then um, they will show you different options. Yeah, if you still cannot find it over there, do let us know, then I will send it across to you. Right. Because there's um, a couple yeah. of options, yeah. Okay. okay. Um. One more question just came in. Let me just send it across. Um. I think this one probably it would be better to take it separately. But this person was actually asking about uh pricing for the okay. P1 Gen 4 and P350 tower. So I think this one will have you reach out separately to yep. the. Yeah. I think we have to pass it to the sales to uh do a quotation. Yeah. All right. So maybe let's just give another minute if there's any other questions that you like uh, Jalil to just answer for today. Yep. As you are doing this, I'm actually opening up the options to, yeah, because I, I can give you a part number if you need the part number to buy your P1 Gen 4, or I could actually just answer this separately. Yeah. Okay. 
let me know if there's further question. Okay, I think we can close for now. Um, so as always, if there's any other further questions, please reach out to the Lenovo team. And as we mentioned, there's also the email lenovo.sg at lenovo.com that you can also write into. All right. So thank you again, Jalil, for today's uh, sharing. And then you. We'll, we'll move. Well, you can stay on with me while we go on to the exciting part now. Let's draw. Can, do you put yeah. my name in? <laughs> I want to win an X1 full. Yes, yeah. I want an X1 full. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we have done is actually um, all those who have stayed with us uh, for today's session, from even from the start, we've actually put all your names into a wheel. And then we are going to draw the winner for today. All right. So, just give me a moment while I pull up the wheel. Okay, this is not applicable for Lenovo staff. <laughs> X1 Flow, X1 Flow, yeah. Hey, hey, is the wheel do you see your name there? Yeah. Yeah, all right. So we have only wow. one unit we are giving away, all right, today. So this is going to be the really, really lucky winner, all right? So I'm going to spin now. Let's see who is our lucky winner. Carol, Carol Cho. Cho or Chow? Sorry, oh. if we pronounce your name, but yeah. Carol, congratulations. You are the winner. So you'll be getting the X1. Ooh, oh, yes, wow. your Christmas present. Yeah, nice Christmas present. Okay, Thanks. yep. All right, so. Let me, okay, now I, I need to change back our presentation mode. Hang on. <laughs> okay, I hope you all have found the session useful for you. Okay, uh, we wanted to bring, you know, because we have so many new graphic cards, that's why I thought uh, inviting uh, Michael to come uh, and share on this will be very important so that you get very familiar with uh, what the graphic card available. And uh, of course, the intent also to share with you the entire workstation portfolio, okay? So if you have any needs, uh, do reach out to the BP, okay? The business partner, um, as well as um, ourselves, okay? Uh, the account manager that is handling your account, okay? And then um, let us know your requirement. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you for taking over while I was uh, switching. Yeah, this. I see. This is right? called, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Teamwork, right? So yes, once good again, teamwork. Want to thank everyone. Really, today we have really a lot of people joining us. Um, And they have actually stayed out even from the start all the way to the end. Uh, we want to also thank all who have actually participated in the polls. You can see that they were all very active, Um, you know, getting trying to get the correct answers. So again, we mentioned it has to be three out of four correct answers. So we'll be tabulating that and then we'll be sending out the um, gift card, the grab food vouchers separately, all right? And then to our lucky draw winner, we will also reach out to you separately to arrange for the delivery of the prize. So with that, we want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, just take, maybe just take another minute or so of your time when you log out to fill up the feedback form so that we can also get your input on what are the other maybe topics that you'd like to see for future webinars. So with that, um, thanks again and keep safe. Have a good week ahead. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.